Hello lads and lassies and welcome back to my channel as I'm Mr Mayhem today. We'll be ranking the 19 films I saw in the cinema or theatre depending on where you live. Um, from worst to best. Now this is my opinion. You know don't get mad. Um, I'm not counting Indiana Jones because I won't be seeing it until the 1st of July. So that's the second half. Um, but yeah. Uh, before we get into this, if you do enjoy this, make sure to like, drop a comment, subscribe for more. You can support me on Patreon, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, links in the description, and let's just get into it. So, turn that monitor off. Um, so first up, uh, at, so at number 19, the worst film I've seen this year is At Man of the Wasp, Quantum Mania. Now, I had a little bit of hype for this because Kang, you know, could be a great villain. Jonathan Majors is a fantastic actor. And there was this kind of like curiosity. And then the first reviews came out, they said, oh, Kang is, you know, the highlight. It's actually really good. Uh, and then someone someone at Marvel was like, it's the best screenplay they've ever read. And uh, well, it turned out to be a big pile of poo. Um, it wasn't entirely awful. Kang, uh, Jonathan Majors' performance as Kang definitely saved the second half of the film. But it's just not good. I gave that two stars if you're wondering. That's where we're setting the bar at here. So it's not, like, awful, awful, but it's still, like, pretty bad. So, uh, yeah, number 19, Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania. Uh, number 18 is the Super Mario Bros. movie. Uh, I went into this kind of optimistic, but halfway through, I just, I just, I checked out because everything went at about a million miles an hour. Nothing had time to breathe. Uh, the comedy was not funny to me. The animation was pretty just basic and kind of stale and yeah it was it i just really didn't enjoy it um i gave that a two and a half um but i can see why other people would like it there were some aspects i did like about it like i thought everyone did a fine job with their performances um but yeah uh number 17 is the flash this is one i thought would be a lot higher than this um yeah, The Flash was very disappointing, um, but it's like I'm not annoyed by it. Uh, I think what didn't help is that the whole film is in the trailers. And the whole film kind of feels like it just goes nowhere. Uh, and it feels like cameos for cameos' sake. Uh, uh, Supergirl has nothing to do. Michael Keaton has nothing to do. Uh, Michael Shannon has nothing to do. I'm not surprised he said it was unsatisfying. Um... Like, the comedy works for the most part, but sometimes it doesn't. Uh, the CGI is awful. There are shots where it's clearly, it's only, it's just the one flash in the scene, but yet they chose to use a CGI model instead of just putting Ezra Miller in that scene, which I just, it baffles me. Um, so it's, it's yeah, it's it's not, it, it it's not good. I mean, I did enjoy it more than S Super Mario, but it, it's just, it's so, it's such a strange film. Um, I don't get the hype on this one at all, uh, and yeah, I'm not a fan. That was a two and a half. Number 16 is Shazam! Fury of the Gods. This was a film I wasn't actually even going to see in cinemas, but me and Calm went for tea one time, and then we just had, we decided we were going to go see something. So we saw Shazam! Fury of the Gods in, like, early April, like a month after it came out. And it wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. Uh, it's fun. It's safe. Um, although Shazam's character does not line up with his, uh, child counterpart, it just doesn't really, it doesn't really mesh that well, but, um, it's still, it, it's still decent, I mean, it's better than The Flash and everything that's come before it, that's why it's higher, but, um, it's still very forgettable, just, yeah, I, I give that a three. Then number 15, we have Fast X, uh, this one, I enjoyed a lot more than I'd like to admit, um, after Fast 9 or F9, I was I checked out. But with Fast X, I enjoyed how ridiculous it was. The one thing that kept this from being like a two-star, or maybe even a two-and-a-half, was uh, Jason Momoa's performance. He is insanely entertaining in this film. He's hilarious. He's over the top. He knows what kind of film he's in. Um, another thing that really puts it down for me is the fact that it ends so abruptly and we have to wait two years for it to be resolved. And then they'll probably cliffhanger us again if this three-part thing is happening. So, yeah, I give that a three as well. Um, enjoyed it more than Shazam, but only but only a little bit. Then number 14, we have Renfield. I enjoyed Renfield for what it is. Um, <coughs> it, it did feel like it went a million miles per hour. 
Um, but I could I could keep up with it for the most part. Nicolas Cage is fantastic, although he's not in it too much. Uh, the comedy was very much half and half for me, hit or miss. Although I just enjoyed the energy that everyone brought in it um, quite a lot. So I gave that a three and a half. Um, definitely underrated. Um, I would say check it out because it is definitely worth a watch if you're at least curious. Number 13 is Transformers Rise of the Beasts. Um, this film was very entertaining, but it's very safe and kind of, you know, just kind of forgettable. Um, I can see why they did it. They wanted to go with safe after um, last night kind of bombed. So, uh, but I did enjoy it for the most part. There were some unfinished effects that I noticed, but there was like only two shots, and that's just me being nitpicky. But I did, I did, I did really enjoy it. Optimus Prime is a badass. I'm so happy the Michael Bay fucking dialogue is gone. Um, yeah, I gave that a three and a half. Uh, and then on to number twelve, uh, we have Knock at the Cabin. Uh, I really, really enjoyed this film, but it's not a film that I think I would rewatch again anytime soon uh it's definitely it's definitely really good it is quite uh depressing but i sorry i really don't know what else to say about this like without really spoiling it um but it is really good i give that a three and a half uh number 11 we have plane uh this is a film that took me by surprise i enjoyed it way more than i thought i would uh, it's, <laughs> it's actually quite competent in, th in the things it does. Um, I was in suspense for most of it and I just had a good time with it. Um, it's intense and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's not like Citizen Kane, but I just enjoyed it way more than I thought I would. So, and I gave that a three and a half as well. Number 10 is Missing. Uh, now, our, me and Callum's screening of this was fucking god-awful. There was three girls, like, up that end of the cinema that would not stop talking, and then one towards the end kind of laughs, like, tell me what happens, I'm, I, I need to go. And then there was one woman, like, right up the back, like, that way, that, I'm not even joking you, she laughed so loud. Because, like, at first it was okay, you know, she laughed at stuff that was meant to be funny, but then she was laughing at really, like, quite insensitive times and it was like massive belly laughs and it was so annoying it's honestly one of the worst cinema experiences i've ever had but apart from that though the film is fantastic it's just as good as searching um they knocked it out out of the park again i love this kind of like like you know uh these not not murder mysteries but these like mystery films and then you get all the pieces and by the end you're like oh that's what happened so very very good shit uh, i gave that a four at number nine, we have The Boogeyman. Um, this is a film that a lot of people don't seem to like, but I kind of really, really liked it. Um, I thought the scares were really well done. The monster looks cool as fuck. Um, and overall, I just had a really good, really, really good time with it. Um, I'm definitely going to watch it again when I can get my hands on it at home. But yeah, it was it was just really, really solid. Uh, it's a four. The number eight, we have Dungeons & Dragons Honor Among Thieves. This is the biggest surprise of this year. Like, hands down, easy. This film is absolutely fantastic. It is hilarious. It is, like, it, it, it's... It's actually... I'm so shocked at how much I love this and how amazing it was. I actually got to see this at a Secret Unlimited screening three weeks before it came out. And initially, I was going to leave, but we stayed and watched it, and oh my god. It's... It's actually so underrated, and I'm so upset that it's probably not going to get a sequel because it didn't do well at the box office. But honestly, Dungeons and Dragons: Honor Among Thieves is hilarious. It's so much fun. It's the biggest surprise of this year, of and of the last while, like for me, hands down. It's a four and a half. Loved it. Then number seven, we have Scream Six. Uh, I love this film. Um, I'm so happy that the Scream franchise still doesn't have a bad entry, and this one just continues that trend. Uh, I like this more than Scream 2022. I thought it was fantastic. I thought the scares were great. I thought the whole mystery was great, and yeah, I, I just... And the kills and the chases, just everything about it was fantastic. The twist didn't work for me the first time, but the second time, it did. Um, but yeah, honestly, fantastic. 
give that a five. I should have said that. Yeah, we're into the five territory now, so I liked a lot more than I did this first half of the year. Then at number six, we have Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. This was a film that I went back and forth on heavily. Um, so I saw it opening day with Callum, and I was bawling my eyes out, and I gave it a two and a half because I just thought it was really, really cruel. Um, and it's kind of this thing where you kind of get all caught up in the emotions that, like, you um, you think something's worse than it is, so when you eventually go back to it, it's actually not that bad, and that's what happened to Guardians 3, because I saw it again with Callum and loved it. Like, the first time I loved it, like, I loved the film, but I just couldn't get past the animal cruelty stuff, but the second time I saw it, oh, the best Guardians film, hands down, and one of the best we've gotten since uh, Endgame, definitely. Uh, absolutely fantastic, beautiful send-off for the Guardians, if that's them. Uh, just absolutely fantastic. Um, still be careful with the animal cruelty stuff because it is quite, it is, like, I still, I choked up a couple times the second time, but it's, I'm, I'm a lot more tolerant to it now. That's a five, obviously. Uh, oh, speaking of five, at number five, we have Puss in Boots, The Last Wish. This was another one that was a big surprise, but not so much because I'd already heard reviews about it before, but, um, yeah, Puss in Boots, The Last Wish is one of the best animated films I've ever seen. Um, the art style is amazing, obviously inspired by Spider-Verse a little bit, but honestly, the message behind this film, the animation, just everything about it is just so charming and fantastic and perfect. And go and see Puss in Boots The Last Wish if you've not seen it. It is incredible. It's obviously a five. And number four, we have Creed Three. Uh, this was a film that uh, I saw six times in the theatre uh, or cinema, and... What a film. Um, Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut is fantastic. Um, yeah, it's very special to me because me and Callum travelled to see it in IMAX because we don't, we don't have an IMAX near us. And <sighs> What a film. What a film. Only problem with this is, and this is a, this is a physical release problem, is there was no IMAX um, ratio for the fight scenes on the, on the Blu-ray or 4K and... It, yeah, it, that's besides the point. The film itself is fantastic. Uh, the Creed trilogy is awesome. I'm just scared about what they're going to do with Creed 4 because they've just announced that they're doing the Amara, you know, starting her career in a comic, which I thought would have been cool to see in a film, but yeah, that's obviously a five. At number three, we have Evil Dead Rise. Um, this, again, was a, a very, very, very welcome surprise. I loved this film. I saw it three times in cinemas. I think I saw it three times in the space of a week. Um, it was absolutely fantastic. Uh, Alyssa Sutherland is amazing. Um, just, oh, to me, it's, it's probably my favorite Evil Dead, um, definitely tied with Army of Darkness, but I, I, I just adored this film. Um, it, just the scares... Just, oh, Chef Kiss, absolutely fantastic. Um, a very big surprise. I'm so happy it was as good as it was. It's a five, obviously. And then number two, there's only two films left that could be here. And obviously, if you know me, then you'll know what's number one when I say what number two is. Number two is Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. Uh, this film slaps. I've seen it twice now. I'm seeing it another two times in the next two days um, when I'm recording this. It slaps. The animation is gorgeous. The story is amazing. The cliffhanger slaps. Everything about this film is just absolutely perfect. And I I rewatched the first the I rewatched it in at the Spider Verse just b before I saw this, and I didn't really vibe with it. Like I've I've never really loved it, so it's not it's more like a four for me but this one leaps and leaps and bounds better i love this one it is absolutely fantastic it's a five i mean i don't really think i need to say much more if you haven't seen it what are you doing go and see it and then at number one it's john wick four i saw john wick four eight times in the cinema uh and it's the most i've ever seen a film this film slaps it is perfection in my opinion it is a perfect send-off for john wick it's just so good. The action is turned up to 11. The just... Oh. I actually... I can't get over how fucking good John Wick 4 actually is. Um, 
It goes by so quickly for a film that's almost three hours. The score is incredible. Just everything about it is just perfect. And it's my favorite film I've seen this year so far. And it's going to be damn fucking hard to top this. So, um, yeah. But that has been the first half of 2023 ranked for me. Um, I will check in again at the end of the year and we'll rank everything. So, yeah, let, let me know what your favorite your least favorite film of this year is let me know what the biggest surprise or the biggest letdown was for you and uh yeah thank you guys so much for watching as always if you do enjoy this moment of a like drop a comment subscribe for more you can support me on patreon follow me on instagram twitter links in the description i'll catch you in the next one cheers